don't quote me on it. Yeah, it's very purpose built for what he needs. Variety, that's what I'm getting you, variety. What's up guys, it's Tommy and we're gonna be doing a walkthrough on the shop. Let's go check out what's going on. Look at this Cobra jet we have in here. This thing is a beast. Anything that comes with a parachute, uh, you know this is gonna be cool. Okay, so let's start this over again. You know, man, the sun is shining, but you have lost the ability to take any joy in life. So good morning from the LA Col Coliseum. It's too early in the morning. I need like a, a large black coffee. So good morning from the LA Coliseum. I'm Tommy from Galvin Auto Sports, and we're here for the NASCAR race. Uh, this is a very unique and special race because NASCAR never races around the Coliseum. Uh, this is uh, definitely a short uh, course track, if you will, and we've been invited uh, to come out here with a couple of our friends uh, to enjoy the day. I'm here with Steve McCord. So Steve McCord used to be the old general manager at Galvin Auto Sports uh, before I took over, and we're also here with Eric Simpkins, our shop foreman. So come with us while we take a look around. I'm going to show you guys uh, a little bit about the paddocks. We're in, we're in the uh, the garage pit right now, if you will. So all the trucks are here for all the different teams. And I'll kind of take you around here, show you a little bit lay of the land, and let's see some racing, all right? So, okay, those fuel jugs are pretty heavy. I think they're about like 100 pounds each. So you have a little dolly that takes them, a dolly for the jacks, the toolboxes, everything kind of set up here. All the different teams, you can see their trailers. All the different teams, all the different sponsors. For the most part, all the trucks are the same. Some teams that have a bigger budget will have nicer trucks uh, and, and a little bit more options and a little more decked out. Some of them have like a second floor, but for the most part, they're all going to be the same. You're going to see the drivers down there. Big guy, right? We've got the M&M car. Steve knows a couple of the drivers, so he's going to go say hi to them. Get the M&M still on the right counter. Nice. <laughs> well, there you go. So we've been invited to go to their rig. So inside here is where their operations will take place. You have everything from their comms to their lockers for the uh, individuals who work here. Obviously some snacks. Um, and you got fire suits for here. There you go. You have all the fire suits for the crew here. Pretty badass. And then so you have, uh, again, tools and all the other spare parts they might need uh, for the vehicles. You have like mounts to hold the shocks or whatever uh, they're going to be servicing. So this is pretty decked out for everything that they're going to need. And also the cars go above us. So below, above us, there's room for two of the race cars. Oh, so there you go. So you can kind of see. back of cars are sent home, so, so that's where they go. This is the area where they actually keep the cars. And you have a little office up there where they need to hang out. They can either watch the race from there or just take a rest. It's a shock too. That's for shocks and I think this is for springs. Yeah, so there you go. So the shock will get mounted there and I guess it's like a dyno. Yeah, that's for the spring, right? So spring rate. So it's more like a dyno for the shock, you think? Yeah, shock dyno. This is where I'm, I'm concerned about. This is the this is the best part of the whole trailer. But for here, Eric, tell me what's your favorite uh, part about coming out to these NASCAR races? This one in particular is this is the first race with the next gen cars. So we get to see the latest evolution of these NASCARs. So when you say next gen, what like the 2022 series has a different style of car than 2021? Completely different. Different uh, chassis, suspension, transmission. Wheels and tires, everything's changed. All right. Well, so there you go. So Eric is a little bit more in tune with the racing stuff than I am. So apparently, these are all new cars. So again, visually, they might look the same from the TV or from you know uh, 10 feet away, but underneath their skin, they're completely different. So that's going to be exciting for someone who follows sports like Eric's uh, to check it out. And for me, I just enjoy it because it's cool to see all this kind of all these kind of things out here. So traditionally, NASCAR would have a regular five lug like a steel wheel five lugs now it's a aluminum wheel aluminum or magnesium wheel with a so that's wheel. definitely different because the last race that i've been to for nascar had the traditional style you know with the five lug nuts and then this is that room with the templates and the right height so Eric was saying, here's where they measure templates and ride height. So they have templates for each kind of car. So if it's a Camry or a Chevy or a Ford, and they'll run them through this room to make sure everyone's in uh, compliance with the restrictions and the regulations. So this is where they have all the cars lined up for the race. You got a couple of the teams like uh, boxes there if they're doing any last minute uh, corrections or any fixes. So you can see what Eric was saying. So this year, these wheels are all different. Again, it used to have a traditional steely type wheel. Uh, they have that completely differently. You have uh, the whole body and aerodynamics on the cars look different as well, honestly. Seeing them in person, you could definitely see the difference. 
And so if you look in the quarter window, the back window of this car, those are called NACA ducts. Um, if you look at it down the body side, it's just flat, but there's an inlet. You see NACA ducts like that on um, aircraft, race cars, stuff like that. So those NACA ducts are pulling in air. You can see there's like black tubing back there. They're probably feeding either the brakes or something back there that needs to be cooled. Those are called NACA ducts, right? Am I saying the word right? <clears throat> Not like my aubergine or fabergine. Aubergine. Aubergine. <laughs> National Aeronautical <clears throat> something something. But they were from aircraft initially, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's designed in a way that it'll take in air without increasing drag. Hey, what's going on? What are you guys working on? Tail lights? I added these, uh, these oh, with the bed lights. Yeah, the bed oh, nice. That's cool. It already came Linex. From the, nice. So this is a Maverick. It's Ford's uh, all-new uh, entry-level pickup truck. They're awesome. Uh, you could fit like a you could fit a pallet in here. It might be a tight squeeze, but you could fit a pallet. So yeah, Javier's doing bed lights. Uh, which will help you at night when you're getting stuff in and out of your bed. It'd be kind of cool. This GT500, so a client of ours bought this as a dedicated track car. Uh, he bought it from an auction, had some stuff wrong with it. Um, you guys can kind of see we are, uh... yes, that is a subframe we're replacing. Again, there were some issues earlier on with the vehicle before it was purchased. And so now we're making it right so this customer can have a track car. This is a preload Mustang. We refer to something as a preload when we take a vehicle from inventory and then we upgrade it before it's sold and then put it on the lot for someone to buy it. So we refer to in Galpin Land as a preload. We got, walked through our lot, we brought it in here, we came up with an idea of what we want to install on it. In this case, we're doing wheels, tires, lowering, an aero kit, and some, I think some uh, uh, racing stripes. So we're gonna do all that. And then once it's done, it goes across the street to Galpin Ford. And then Galpin Ford has it on display. Some lucky owner is gonna come up and say, hey, I want a Mustang, but I don't want a stock Mustang. And there you go, this might be exactly what they want. And they go ahead and buy it. Um, hey, where are you going? You're supposed to be with me. I'm trying to catch up. Oh, come on. You can see the Patrick's already done the shock. So Ford Performance upgraded shock, Ford Performance spring. Again, all this is gonna help lower the right height of the vehicle. By lowering the center of gravity, you're gonna have uh, a tighter uh, handling feel. The car's gonna have less body roll. So the car is gonna go left and right less at higher speeds or any speeds technically when you're uh, you know, turning left and right, it's gonna be more stable. And also I think it looks nice. Ford Racing already thinks about this when they make their springs, but these springs only lower the car about an inch, 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, um, if I'm not mistaken, front and rear. When you're lowering a vehicle too much, uh, not too much, but if you're lowering a vehicle an aggressive amount, two inches, three inches, whatnot, you have something to deal with, which is called bump steer, where the tie rods now are in a different angle because the car's so lowered, the tie rod is not as long as it needs to be. And when you're going over bumps, particularly when you're turning, you can feel the car will jerk left and right. The car's not gonna tra track straight. It's called bump steer. So you'll see companies making something called a bump steer kit. Again, when we're doing a, a factory a lowering kit like a Ford Racing, Ford Racing is factory to me pretty much. The engineers are Ford engineers. They've designed it to work with it. So you don't need a bump steer kit necessarily with this. Can it benefit from it? Yeah, I think, but uh, you don't need it with this. But if you're gonna get coilovers and slam the sky or airbags and slam the sky, I would definitely do a bump steer kit. I think it's just uh, a great way to keep uh, the integrity and the, and the ride and the performance of the vehicle and how it should have been from the factory. Again, even though these aren't the upgraded Brembo's, they're still quite nice. <clears throat> Four pistons, so two pistons here, two pistons on the back, a massive rotor. You got a strut configuration up front, which is your shock and your spring all in one. So we call this a strut, where the back setup was a shock and the spring separately. Uh, otherwise, back up front here, 
We're gonna take that pony off, and I think we're gonna color match that pony to the car to make it pop a little bit. And then on this side, instead of color matching it to the car, it's gonna blend in and go away, so we're gonna make these black. And I think we're gonna make that dot match the car. So I think that'll be a couple cool touches. Um, the wheels that are gonna go on, the wheels that came off. And another thing is we're gonna go for is we're gonna put wider wheels. So again, you're gonna increase the performance of the vehicle by putting wider wheels. The one caveat to that is you're only increasing the performance of the uh, vehicle in dry conditions. If you're gonna be running in a wet, slippery, or icy place, you don't wanna have wider wheels on your car because it's gonna do the exact opposite and you're gonna give you less performance. But in LA, it's February right now, it's like 90 degrees outside. So yeah, for us, you're good. So behind us, or you, David, we have a Gen 2 Raptor. The truck came in, it just needed to be gone through front to rear, up to top to bottom. So this is one of the trucks that's coming with me to Mexico. Next Saturday uh, morning, we're all gonna meet at the border and head down to Mexico. So this is gonna be one of the trucks with us. Ray is going through it and making sure everything's buttoned up and everything's where it should be. So we're doing an off-road prep on this Raptor as well. Ray's messing with the intercooler up front. Um, you see the engine up in there. So this vehicle has an SVC off-road mid-travel kit. So what the mid-travel kit is, you have an, uh, a new upper control arm, a new spindle, a new lower control arm, and also, not only are they just new just to be new, but this uh, increases the track width of the truck, so the truck is wider by uh, three inches on each side uh, because of the suspension. So you can see, you have the upgraded tie rods on here, so these are beefy units that are almost undestructible. You have your axle inside here, you have the main coilover shock, which is again, is the spring with the shock in it in the reservoir. And then you have your bypass, this bad boy, which is again, gonna help dampen the, the hit from when this truck's going off-road and you hit an obstacle. So this is a basic rundown of a SDC mid travel kit. And again, on, on stock trucks, what you run into is the spindle sometimes will snap. If you hit an obstacle or a washout uh, hard enough, you will snap your spindle, but that's why this thing's gusted in. It's so beefy. And if you break this, you're doing something crazy. With this truck needs to be caged if you're breaking the suspension. So poking inside, again, that, what you see there is called a Lowrance. It's a uh, satellite-based navigation system. So you load up your files in there um, and you're able to run. So back here, you have the bypass shocks. We've talked about this in, in other builds, but we have a hole through the bed and we have a bypass rack up there and the shock is mounted into it. And these are 4.0s. I'm pretty sure these are 4.0s as well with a bump stop kit uh, from SVC. So it's a bump stop kit from SVC running Fox uh, bump stops and uh, KDM shocks. I think these are probably, KDM is a shop that we deal with uh, locally in, in Thousand Oaks and uh, he rebuilds these for us. So he went through this and made sure they're all good. But I think they're, I think they're kings to start with. I believe they're kings. Could be wrong. Uh, let's see. You know, they might be foxes, so don't don't quote me on it. Back here, yeah, nothing uh, nothing crazy special. It's just we have a SDC frame cut from uh, rear bumper. And then this, you can see the bypasses, the bypass rack is right there. The shocks go right through there. The bypasses are mounted right next to them. Ah, the fire extinguisher is mounted right next to them. The bypasses are on the body of the shock. You have some lights facing the rear for dust lights when we're off-roading. Uh, this bar you see here, I have a different version of it in my truck. This is a very stout and robust uh, version, which it keeps these bed sides are actually not that strong because there's no strength to be had here because this is uh, removable or this is, you know, uh, you open this up. So these will tend to flex and bow out when you're off-roading. A lot of times, if you don't have a brace like this, this tailgate goes bye-bye when you're off-roading. Hang on, little buddy! So we recommend for clients that don't have bracing, you take off your tailgate if you're gonna go on a long uh, off-road run like we are in Mexico for four or five days, it, you're probably gonna lose your tailgate. You have a Mountain First Pro Eagle Jack, cooler and tool bag or toolbox will go here. Fuel pans will go in the middle there. Yeah, it's very purpose-built for what he needs. After you. Okay, so quick trivia, or not trivia, quick little bit. One of the cars that scares me the most inside this collection is that guy. Uh, so back, a couple years back, before the new Ford GTs, before that one was unveiled and, and debuted and that one was gonna you know, be made, we took a early generation Ford GT, we took one of those 
and redid everything and, and built what we thought the modern GT should look like, which we call the GT R1. This thing went through a couple different power configurations. We first had it twin turboed, and right now it's running a four liter Whipple supercharger. This thing is scary, almost violent. Uh, this thing dynoded 1,071 to the wheels. Um, I've had the pleasure of being able to drive it, and it literally scares the bejesus out of me. Keep up, David. Oh, he's doing his job. He's getting B-roll. I'm sorry. Here, let's speed this up. Uh, you guys are familiar with that uh, Apache that we have there. We came in for some work on the bedwood. We have the bedwood here. Now, so some people might ask, or I've been already asked, why didn't we just get new bedwood? That was the plan, but the two manufacturers that are big in the industry that we called, they didn't have anything in stock. So the soonest they could get anything out was four to six weeks. And then the one that we actually wanted, they told me uh, it'll be available at the end of this year. And keep in mind, we're in February right now. So that just didn't work. Uh, here, let's, uh, probably won't get yelled at. Maybe I will. Let's see if I can go in there. It's a little bit loud. We're gonna clean up a little bit of the stuff down here that you're seeing, uh, get it ready for the bed to go back in, and then this one's gonna get paint corrected as well. You can see preemptively, we're taping off all the edges and all the crevices where uh, uh, polish and compound and wax can build up, and we still have somewhere to go. Uh, the fender and stuff has to get masked off as well. And then here's a little project we have for a bike uh, going on uh, that we're painting as well. So we have all the fairings and everything out. Uh, they are actually pulling out uh, the wood right now out of the out of the paint booth. So yeah, this is all going to get prepped and ready to go back in there. I'm not even going to touch it because knowing me, I'll probably mess something up. We're still waiting on parts for this guy. We love working on them, but parts are very scarce. So sometimes cars end up sitting here for quite some time until they get done. So there you have it. That was this week's shop walk around. Again, I'm excited because I'm getting ready to go to Baja next week. I'm trying to get my own truck ready. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know if you guys want to see anything different. And until then, see you guys later.